Politicians are also entitled to travel allowances, electoral allowances, provision of a vehicle or an allowance in lieu of a vehicle, internet and phone services at their home. Okay, for this one, I am pissed the f off. Politicians at the federal level here in Australia, after years of conservative pay rises, are now going to receive a full 4% increase on what they already receive. Excuse me, what? Politicians to receive a 4% pay rise after years of conservative adjustments. And look at Albo laughing his head off. I know this is a stock footage photo taken from Parliament, but still. It's not a good look. Greedy much? Federal politicians will receive a healthy pay increase of 4% from next month after the independent body that sets politician pay determinations previously increased, uh, determined previous increases for federal MPs had been too conservative. Seriously? An independent body decided that the pay rises of our federal politicians were too conservative. But wait until we get stuck into the figures. Here we go. Based on the determination, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's salary will increase from $564,356 to $586,930. And opposition leader Peter Dutton's salary will increase from $401,561 sorry, $401,561 to $417,623. Now let's be absolutely clear. The Prime Minister receives 160% of the base salary that federal MPs are supposed to receive. Good job. So, taking that into consideration, that means that each base member for parliament, hang on, let's actually do the calculations, shall we? Uh, 586930, $366,831.25 a year. If you are a backbench in parliament who has next to no Next to no, you do next to nothing, basically. You voted in to vote on things and you don't really have any much of the power, anything like that. But let's keep in mind, this is on top of all the other, other benefits that they receive. There are members of parliament that receive additional salary on top of the base salary. So in addition to the $586,000 that Albo will be receiving from next month, there's additional things on top of that. You don't say. For example, the travel away from home allowance. The, hang on, parliamentary remuneration, I do have it here. The electorate allowance, an electorate allowance of $19,500 in lieu of private plated vehicles. Because you've got to remember as well, they receive all their travel allowances, all their cars are paid for. They don't have to worry about registration, pay, for, paying for petrol, any of that sort of shit as well. Sign me up. In addition to that, you also have uh, resettlement allowances, there's additional additional fees and sorry additional remuneration for former prime ministers and you got to remember none of this is taxed either as far as i'm aware what the hell seriously uh mp's will have a base salary of 225,000 up from 217,000 wait that math doesn't add up Eh, maybe I did lawyer math earlier. Though they can receive additional pay depending on whether they hold a ministry or shadow ministry. That's what I was talking about, additional ad additional remuneration for certain people. Chair a committee, which most of them are able to chair a committee because, you know, if you want to chair a committee, all you have to do is put forward a motion to create a committee. Wow. Uh, or act as speakers or party whips. Politicians are also entitled to travel allowances, electoral allowances, provision of a vehicle or an allowance in lieu of a vehicle, internet and phone services at their home that they may or may not actually be spending time and living out of. Wow, 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 wow. Um... The Independent Remuneration Tribunal published that it was awarding a 4% pay increase across the board, even though wage data shows the average salary has risen by slightly less because it has been more conservative in previous rulings. Yeah, right. The tribunal said that it would ensure politician pay remains competitive. Politician pay shouldn't be competitive. Being a politician should be a burden. You are there to represent the country, not 
to make a profit. Remember back when being a politician was an actual burden, you had to take two years off from whatever business you were actually doing in order to give your civil du civic duty to your country. Now career politicians make an absolute bucket load and we're the ones paying for it. It's a disgrace. The tribunal is aware that the remuneration increases it has awarded to officers in its jurisdiction over the past decade have been conservative, it said in its determination. The tribunal's primary focus is to provide competitive and equitable remuneration that is appropriate to the responsibilities and experience required of the roles and is sufficient to attract and retain people of calibre. Are you serious? Are you f kidding me? It's not a job application. We, the people, vote these assholes in. The remuneration should be no more than the median wage of the, of the electorate that they represent. This is not something where they should be getting rich off of it just for being there. It's noted that salaries were consistently set below comparable private sector roles in recognition of the public service being performed and that office holders do not expect to be paid at private sector rates. Yet you literally just said that it was slightly below. Just slightly. Just a little bit. <laughs> However, the tribunal said that the increase would be above the average improvement to wages in both the public and private sectors in the past year. June 2023 wage figures in the public sector showed a 3.1% increase in the past year, while it was 3.8% in pay across the private sector. So they're getting a 4% raise and the pencil pushers in government and the people at Centrelink, the people at the the people in the public offices, the ones that you know are actually doing the grunt work. They're getting a 3.1% increase. Doesn't seem fair to me. Uh, amounting to an overall increase of 3.6% overall. The tribunal said that while private sector salaries had risen by 23% in the past decade, politi politician pay had only increased by 14.7%. Still too much, especially with what they're doing to the country. The tribunal lifted MP salaries by 2.75% last year, but pre previously had not determined an increase for politicians since 20. Uh, 2019, when they were raised by 2%. The, largest, the latest ruling is the largest pay rise for MPs in more than a decade and, separate fed and separates federal parliamentarians from some of their state colleagues. In New South Wales, legislation was introduced to freeze politician pay for two years from July, which the then newly installed Premier Chris Minns described as a budget-saving measure. In Victoria, unions criticised the state government after an independent tribunal awarded politicians in the state a 3.5% rise, saying unions must bargain for their workers to receive fair pay increases while politicians have it bestowed upon them. Who's a good boy? Woof. And that is really part of my issue here as well. The tribunal said is, says it is obliged to consider annual wages reviewed by the Fair Work Commission. You mean the Fair Work Commission that answers to the federal parliamentarians? That's nice and independent. Uh, as well as movements in public and private sector salaries in its deliberations. I call a crock of shit. As I said, politicians should not be career politicians. It should not be a permanent job. It is literally you are there to lead the country and to make change if necessary, or to guide us through a proper, econo a proper economy. That's about it. And... Now you're getting a 4% increase on, what, on the already exorbitant amounts you're being paid? No. Fabulous. This is not on and is not okay. I'm sorry, but most of these people, after they leave Parliament, will then get a golden parachute and receive anywhere between two and $300,000 a year for the rest of their lives. That needs to stop as well. I'm sorry, as soon as you're out of Parliament, you should be going right back to whatever job it was you started. What he said. And, you know, actually having to work for... <sighs> actually having to work like a regular person. As you can tell, my blood pressure is a little bit up about this one because for the state that they've put our country into, I am very, very disgusted with politicians all around at the moment. And we all should be. 
It's not just the left. It's not just. It's not just. It's not just Labor. It's not just Dan Andrews. It's not just Anthony Albanese. Uh, Anthony Albanese. I'm not happy with many of the federal parliamentarians, and I can't believe none of them are calling this shit out. Because of course not. They're lining their own pockets. But anyway, people, as always, stay healthy, wealthy, and wise, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers, guys.